Today on Nation Window Cleaning Podcast, we're talking all about keeping your head up in down times, and I got an awesome guest with me. So if you're in window cleaning, thinking about getting into window cleaning, or heck, just in a small business, today is going to be a great episode. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Uh, this is episode like 299 or something crazy. We're almost to 300 episodes. Each episode's 30 minutes long, tons of content. Go back, watch, listen, all of it. Uh, tons of good content and tons of it that probably is not that great, but you can't hit them all out of the park. So go back, watch, and listen to everything you possibly can. And if you are somebody who's watched and listened to everything, you know Shameless Plug is coming. Uh, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. It's what I do. It's how I afford all this hair gel that I apparently use. Um, so if you want to have me buy any name brand stuff, let me put your orders in. That's what I do for a living. It's how I make my cheddar. So if you want or have any orders you need, just go ahead and shoot me a text at 862-312-2026. That is a cell phone. So call me, text me, whatever. Say, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Go ahead and click save this cart and that's it. I can put it in from there. So go do that. Um, and of course, if you haven't yet gotten your subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine, do that. It's awcmag.com is the website. Get the subscription, nerd out, read some articles, get some posters, and of course the stickers to put everything on everything. And our guest today is actually a writer for the magazine. So if you don't know, we're talking today to Mr. TJ. I don't know if it's T Squeegee or if it's TJ or how I should word him, but you definitely know who he is. So what's up, man? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> how about yourself? Um, you know, living the dream. We're we're both still wearing sweatshirts, so it yes, can't be all that yes, great. It's not that great. If <laughs> if you got a sweatshirt on, it's not cool. Yeah. yeah. What's your like average temperature like this time of year? Like uh, about 30 between 30 and 35 degrees right about now i mean i'm right on the lake shore so it's yeah, so cool. it's like shorts weather for you but just yeah. uh, not quite uh, all the way <laughs> yeah. yeah that's it shorts weather <laughs> right so, yeah, yeah. short snowsuit weather that's right i've never been in any state so when i was in wisconsin there's always those people you know that wear shorts all year round just as mm -hmm. like some kind of like prove it thing right. in the winter time you see them walking around their legs are like beet red and it's like Boy, you sure do look cool. <laughs> I have a friend that, as long as I've known him for 30 years, he's never, I've never seen him in pants. That's nuts. Never. He's always wears shorts. Yeah. Shorts and a like Carhartt jacket. I mean, that's, no. that's the extent he will go to always wear shorts. That's a uniform yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like uh, the opposite where I could, I could get wearing pants all the time if you got like mm -hmm. chicken legs or something, but right. shorts, man, I get too cold. I'm a, I'm a yeah. wuss now. I live yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but if anybody doesn't know who you are, a they're living in Iraq. But tell us like who you are, what you do in the industry, and if there's anything else about you that's interesting. Well, I am. Uh, I guess I'm the host or co-host of the Squeegee Life podcast. The, uh, um, you know, number two number podcast. One. <laughs> the proven number one. Podcast. The, the right, proven right. number one window cleaning podcast in the industry. We've been doing it about five years. The YouTube thing, uh, the YouTube podcast thing. I, I, of course, I do vlogs and stuff on YouTube, re product review, stuff like that. Uh, but mainly, I'm a window cleaner. I mean, that's what I do 100% of the time is a, yeah. I, I clean windows. That's, yeah. that's about it. <laughs> what, how long have you been a window cleaner for? I have been cleaning windows since 2004. So... So yeah. Since you've been tw since you were twelve, basically. Yeah, yeah. Nice. You're like I wish, I wish. Kids you see popping up, they're like, ah, I'm like oh, isn't that, and started a company. Isn't that interesting though? How yeah. young Just these there's a lot of yes, yeah, super young kids, and I think it's cool. I mean, yeah. I don't know if it's something that will last forever for them, but you know, it's cool that there's youth injected into the industry, and it's clear that um, social media doing the YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, stuff like that. It's kind of, it's clearly garnered some attention from younger people. Yeah. So what's crazy too, is there, most of us are struggling to hire. Mm -hmm. And then we find these little kids who are like, I just started a company. And you're like, right. There's like a generation gap where like, 
25 to like, you know, well, probably even ear earlier than that, but like 25 to like 40, the people, nobody wants to work. Everybody wants a million dollars to like sit yeah. around. And then like the new generation, you know, it's always cyclical. It just kind of like, you know, yes. the next generation is going to be hardworking again. Yes. So. Let's hope. Let's hope so. We can yeah. only hope. Yeah. No Yay, kidding. Social Security. <laughs> <laughs> Keep paying. Get it as our benefits. Yes. Right? Go ahead, little guy. 9% <laughs> inflation. I don't know what they're going to do with that. Uh, but yeah, I, feel I don't bad know for either. Them. But, you know, hopefully that all gets straightened out eventually. Yeah. It's been a and rough, uh, it's been a, it's been a rough couple of years, man. I mean, you know, things were bound to go left eventually. Yeah. They, they, they swung really, really right for a while as far mm -hmm. as uh, correct and right in general. Mm -hmm. And that pen pendulum, when it goes, it always overcorrects. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately we're back on that side and now it's starting to swing back where you're seeing things starting to come back. Hopefully mm -hmm. it keeps going and doesn't get stopped, but. I won't get into politics, but uh, basically, if you're a business owner, you've 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 focused on politics to some degree. Yeah, well, it's it's relevant, you know, it's relevant to your to everyone's situation right now when it comes to doing business. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent, and that's what we're talking about today. Um, you're the type of person that I really admire for a lot of reasons, but one of the big thing one of the big things is that. Um, you kind of wear your heart on your sleeve. If that mm -hmm. doesn't sound stupid, like a, no. a Eve six song from back in the day, <laughs> but like uh, you're the type of person, like if you're having just like a bad day, yeah, like it's known you're having a bad day. You're not that guy that jumps on and is like, Hey, everything's great. Well, I kind of, I, I want to take the approach to where people, I, I stay, you know, relatable to people. I know, you know, there's, I mean, I, I am admittedly a little rough around the edges, However, I feel like if I'm honest about my day-to-day -day going ons, it's a little more relatable for people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like not everyone is having a wonderful day and hashtag killing it. You know what I mean? Right. It's, you know, some, <laughs> some days are not as good as other days, you know, and you just, <laughs> and it's best to be honest. I feel like. Have you not been on Facebook? Uh, everybody's doing really yeah, everyone, well. Yeah, I'm, I must be the only one that's not doing awesome every single day. So that's right. You, you go to Facebook. <laughs> am, me. I, am I the only one who's ever had the flu? Like everybody's yeah. like, hey, hashtag, you know, <laughs> killing it, just sitting yeah. on the beach. Just yeah. it's like four in the afternoon. You're like, what? What am I doing wrong? <laughs> right. <laughs> what am I? How is this man on the beach right now? Yeah, I've yeah. I've often wondered that myself. I just, you know. I feel like it's better even in a social media setting. I mean, because everything is so plastic now and everything's so perfect. I just feel like, and we felt like with squeegee life to be like, you know, let's just be honest about things. We're going to have bad days. Things are going to suck. I don't like bushes. I want people to know that I don't like being in the bushes. You know what I mean? So I'm just yeah. honest about it. You know, that's one of my common themes throughout my vlogs is I struggle with bushes on a daily yeah. basis and I don't like them. <laughs> there's so much that i could go in that but yeah but i yeah. but i won't yeah yeah no but th that's the key is like people um everybody it's a highlight reel like mm, i talked yes. to bobby walker this is like years ago but mm -hmm. when you get on facebook everybody only shows these awesome things like you look at the next guy and you're like you're always on vacation but you don't right. realize maybe they're just like living on credit cards or you're yeah. always doing this you're always i can't believe it you're on a private jet whoa like there's always a flip side to that yeah yeah. And that's a big thing that I like to talk about to people because when I do this podcast, because it's usually me staring at a, like a, a screen, yeah. I over animated. I'm trying to keep attention and, out, and everybody, I do focus on the positives of most every situation. But mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is, is like there are down times, right? Yes. There are times that suck and there are times that are really good, like mm -hmm. seasons in life. Mm -hmm. are just that i mean and it could be anything people say it comes in threes or whatever the sayings can be it's like all of a sudden it feels like everything you're doing you're just getting dumped on it just won't right. stop raining on just you and it's like okay so you know what do i do from here how do i get myself kind of through that and mm -hmm. that's why i figured it would be a killer topic for you you're a huge route guy and mm -hmm. with everything that kind of happened with like COVID and everything else and the, the not even COVID, but the hype around it mm -hmm. really just kind of screwed things up for a lot of people. And being somebody who is more route driven, I know that mm -hmm. kind of affected you in, yeah. in, in your day to day. 
it affected me so much that I became not a route guy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I took some advice from friends, you know, like Seth Byers from the podcast. He's like, man, you know, I do a lot of residential work as well, but I do kind of gear myself a little more towards the commercial storefront work side of things because I'm in a seasonal climate. You know, I, the area that I'm in is surrounded by big, vacation homes so there's three four months out of the year there's not a lot of whole a lot of a whole lot of residential work going on so you got to kind of stop that gap with route work and when all that the lockdowns and everything happened i mean i got i'd say maybe um i think it was eight calls within maybe 10 minutes of the governor declaring that you know hey it's a state of emergency we're gonna lock everything down i lost all my restaurants, which really is my bread and butter, I do. Yeah, I was at the time I was doing fourteen restaurants a week, so I was doing two or three every morning. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it got to to a fever pitch there. I was making all kinds of money, and then and then I wasn't making all kinds of money. Yeah. Like, Spring is coming. What am I going to do this summer? You know what I mean? And I just had to shift gears. You have to be able to shift gears. Yeah. You know and. It's that, that term pivot that, that yeah. upset me because it was overused but it was absolutely true you do you definitely have to switch gears pivot whichever i downshifted and i was like you know what it's not the end of the world those calls that normally i'm like i just don't have the time to do i'm gonna make sure that every residential call i get this season i'm gonna be after it you know what i mean and yeah then i started thinking of ways like well how can i maintain this commercial work and not lose it and then I just started going to them like, you know, things are starting to loosen up a little bit. You guys are open. How about we just do the outsides in the in the meantime? Yeah. And a couple of those, you know, locations went to just, you know, outside only. And I kept them going. And I'm still doing working for them now. A couple of them, um, they wanted to rebid. And I'll be honest, after those that season of just doing, I was like, man, I'm really in a better place not having to yeah. kill myself. I mean, because what I was doing between five o'clock and 10 o'clock was really, it had become a drain on me. And I didn't realize oh, yeah. it. I didn't realize it. I mean, I missed the money, you know, at first I missed the money, but after I kind of shifted gears and kind of like worked myself into a little bit more a residential routine, I didn't miss the money at all. I was actually making more money and I actually had more time with the family. I wasn't coming home and dying on the couch. Insanity. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, it, That's it's, one thing we do as business owners in general is just run rampant. And then by the time we like burn out, then we realize that we were running too hard, running way too hard. And then I'm, you know, there's, there's something to, to be said. I mean, in my climate and where I work on the shores of Lake Erie, you do have to hustle. You have to hustle nine months out of yeah. the year. You have to, or you're not going to survive those three months. You know, you have to do the right things. However, there is a law of diminishing returns there. I mean, I've got all this money in the bank, but I'm sleeping all the time yeah you know yeah. because i have no i have no energy to do anything else i have a pool in the backyard i i'm never in it you know what i mean yeah. what am i doing you know i spent yeah, all this yeah. money for their leisure activities you know and then i can't ever enjoy them because i'm yeah. always a lump on the log and it's not fair to the kids it's not fair to the wife you know so you gotta you gotta kind of weigh those things out so when i started weighing them out i was like you know what some young kid can have all those McDonald's. I'm okay with not having those. I'll make yeah. the money up in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, what, what's interesting is when we get in business, a lot of us, we get into business and we're like, dude, there's going to be so much freedom. I can work whenever I want. Like, dude. Mm. And then we start getting the money and all of a sudden it, our interest chains in almost a hundred percent of businesses all of a sudden are money. And then it's like, well, yeah, I work 10 hours a day, but I got this nice, like you said, pool, or I got mm. this, and it's like, okay, so your freedom, you've changed for money because now money is the driving factor, mm -hmm. you know, and it takes people a long time to get back in that mindset. It's like, I thought, know. I thought, you know, when I started the business, I thought for sure, I was like, oh man, this is, and then like a year in, I was like, oh, this is not what I thought it was going to be. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm, it, it, it becomes, I mean, the, the main thing is definitely getting out of bed every day. You got to be a special kind of person. I, I mean, I'm a owner operator so i don't have anyone employed i employ my daughter seasonally um but you have to have that yeah. first first and foremost 
And when you run yourself ragged, it's really hard to have that every morning. You know, yeah. what I mean? getting up at four thirty, five o'clock every morning that tends to wear on you after a while. You know, it j it just does. Yeah, you're still it's, sore from the day before, yeah, and you're like, man, yeah. I'm gonna get more. Like, it's, you're not building back up. I mean, I have a hot tub, but I'm too I'm I'm too asleep to lay in the hot tub, and apparently, you're not supposed to lay in those and sleep. So, <laughs> some weird rule. But by the way, yeah. things are going pretty good for TJ, who has a pool and a hot tub, probably yeah. connected in like a kidney shape behind his no, his, no. you know, third no. floor balcony. I have an above ground pool, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, is it a hole with water? It yes, works. it right. is. It is a hole with so, water. And on the opposite side of people just being kind of bummed out with everything, like mm -hmm. if if you're in that season, what what do you focus on? Like for you, what does it what does it take for you to like look at to like, hey, I just had eight calls that just like dumped on me all at one time. Like, what do you focus on? I focus on. I'm gonna be. I'll be super honest. I focus on my family. Yeah, because uh, I put that in my head first and foremost, because if I start to panic, they're going to panic. Yeah. So I just try to keep it together. I internalize it, which is really healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a spot way down deep where there's a lot of stuff. You got to look at it from the perspective that there are trillions of windows out there and eventually someone's going to want them cleaned. And although it may seem like the end of the world work will come and it at that time it seemed like the end of the world it was like what am i gonna do and then once the weather started to break and everybody was home and they realized oh man my windows look like crap i'm gonna find a window cleaner to clean my windows yeah it actually i it was actual like a residential renaissance for me it yeah. was like i was the amount of customers i gathered up in that that two-year period right there was unbelievable and yeah. I'm still doing them to this day. I'm, I mean, most of them are already booked for spring. It's really, really crazy how that worked out. So yeah. for every door that closes, I know this is a cliche, but it is the truth. For every door that closes, at least two more will open. It's yeah. it's the truth. Oh, yeah. It really is. We, we saw too, like March was a crap month. I remember like one time sitting there and just twiddling my thumbs like, mm -hmm. I'm a commissioned person. Like, if people, I'm like calling people like, Hey man, just want to like follow up. And like, did you not hear that? Like there's this, like, and you're like, Oh well, yeah. You but know, like, I'm, like life is trying to go on. They're just like, I don't even know what, like the, the point was nobody knew. Right. So it was right. this weird, big panic. And then all of a sudden uh, April came and then mm -hmm. you said, everybody's sitting at home, like instead of going to the office and they're like, Ugh, my windows look like crap. Right. Like, and then it was this great thing. And then everything was back and it was kind of like, okay, well, Nobody focused on that because everybody was just so unsure of where we were going. Right. Well, and not only that, you know, people are, there's a, they got money. They got money piled up because they can't go nowhere. Yeah. They can't go to the bar and spend their money. They can't, yeah. they can't go to the restaurant and spend their money every Friday. They can't do that. So they got money laying around. Like, what do I do with this money? So I, I mean, there was a lot of customers, you know, that I didn't hear back from. It was just ex like, uh, income that they weren't used to having laying around they're like well i'm gonna have a professional come in and clean my gutters or you know i'm here all the time yeah, i can clean the patio it. clean yeah. the windows you know whatever replace my screens you know it was it was nice you know so yeah well here's but everything question starting I to come, go ahead no i was just gonna say in hard times what doesn't change so we know what changes right like people's incomes their mindset their everything and that that happens but what does not change like what do you think was like the biggest um, stationary thing through everything. Um, the people that have money always have money, and the, and my my customer base, our customer base, as a service in the service industry, pressure washing, gutter cleaning, window cleaning. The people that pay you to do that are always going to have money to pay you to do that. Yeah. You yeah, know, we're a so luxury service. We're we not a luxury not, service. Somebody doesn't need their diabetes mm -hmm. medicine. Like you have right. to, no matter what, if it's good or bad, like we're a luxury service. Mm -hmm. That's why it's good to, even though, you know, route work is really good um, to a nice steady. I know I'm going to have this money every month kind of thing. Being open to doing residential work is I think paramount. You know what I mean? Because you're going to, that's all continuous revenue stream all the time you may not get the same customer every single year but you're going to be doing houses every year you're yeah. going to feel calls for that every year because those people aren't paying you because they don't want to clean they they don't want they're they don't know how to clean windows like i don't know how to clean my windows i gotta call an expert no they're calling you because they don't want to do it 
Yeah. Yeah. Now that was one of my customers told me, he's like, I don't, Terry, I don't pay you because I'm not smart enough to clean a window. He goes, I pay you because I don't want to do it. And I know you're going to do a good job. He goes, that's it. Period. Point blank. I was like, well, okay. You know, the more something sucks, the more you get paid to do it. Apparently he can clean windows as good as me. He just, he just doesn't do it. Right. (laughs) At least that's the way it came off. <laughs> yeah. Everybody always says, no matter how long you're in business too, it's not about yeah. um, how clean of a window it is. It's mm-hmm. how efficiently you can do it. And there's mm-hmm. nobody who doesn't clean windows that can clean as fast as a window cleaner. Right. right? That's like the if truth. You, if you took 12 hours to clean your windows, which I know people who said like, well, last year it took me Saturday and Sunday to do this. It's going to take you just as long. It's like, no, I'll be out of there in mm-hmm. two hours. Like, We'll have a crew, and they're like, "Those people no, are always the, estimating it." Yeah, those people are always the people that, when you're done in two hours, like, "I, I can't. I'm, I'm going to pay you this much." And I'm, well, you're not paying me for my time; you're paying me for my experience. So, mm-hmm. just because it took you three days to clean your windows doesn't mean it's going to take me three days. You go point something out that I did wrong, and I'll stand right here and wait for you to show me what it was. (laughs) I'll wait. (laughs) That's the thing. You you don't pay for the time it takes to do a service, but the time it takes you to learn to do the service. Exactly. Exactly. And you're paying for a clean window, really. If I use a water-fed pole or if I used a magic wand, I'm going to clean it. It's going to be clean. And if I can just snap my fingers, you're going to pay me the same amount. Mm -hmm. But it just is what it is. Hard for people to say. I always say when people go... uh, you're making $200 an hour. You got a really good job or something. I always say, yeah, we're hiring. And then we laugh and then they pay me. All right. Yeah. If with route is always, I would say route is always the first to go also, as far as Mm -hmm. as soon as hard times come, like you said, you got eight calls. Mm -hmm. Do you find that the residential may have a bigger span, but route is, we're one of the most throwaway services kind of when it comes to route, like, Yes, because most places have most places and route work like storefront work, commercial work have employees and worse comes to worse. They'll just send some guy out there with a rag and a bottle of grease. It seems like I don't think they use Windex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much it. A greasy rag and some Windex and they'll wipe the windows down. So that will be the very first thing to go because there will be they they have somebody already in, under their employ that they can force to do that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's that's, usually the first to go. That's when usually I, the first So service. I am uh yeah, you you did two probably, but I uh went through two thousand eight where mm-hmm. everything kind of just like was yeah. another thing where it was a it was a bubble and it was yes. like this too where it was just like overnight it was like oh well everything collapsed like that's actually what led to me becoming a window cleaner full time was the 2000 because I was a carpenter I mean I did window cleaning part time um, in the evenings and on the weekends and then once that happened. <laughs> You know, I wasn't the the union hall wasn't calling no more. You know, <laughs> so I ended up working full time window cleaning. You know what I mean? And I mean, pivoted. good, I good for I, I pivoted, yes. And then I started hashtag killing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you got a pool in a hot tub. Boom! Yeah. Window cleaner. Boom! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> well, we we know hard times come. We know that we're kind of getting out of it as far as seasons go and stuff, but like, what can you do to, or what do you do? I should say to kind of protect yourself from getting into it. Like if you see it coming, mm-hmm. how do you protect yourself from the hard times? Cause some of the people out there, I, I gotta say real quick, this is not against these people either. I am pretty sure they're still in business, but I had guys literally crying on the phone mm-hmm. telling me about what was going on like during this time. Mm-hmm. And there were companies who literally, I had one guy who lost 64% of his businesses that he did, mm-hmm. uh, went out of business, like close their doors, not just pause yeah. service. They just went out of business. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I- I'm like rebuilding a company. Like if you see hard times coming or you think they're coming or whatever, like how can you make it so solid and protect yourself against those? Man, I, I that's a really tough question. I, I mean, I honestly don't know. Or l- l- let me re- I really let me don't re- know re- how re- I did it, to be quite honest with you. I, I guess yeah. really the only thing, just to be, you cannot, cannot, no matter what, don't ever give up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't, you can't give up. Yeah. So you, you have to think about what are other ways, what are other things that I can do to keep money coming in. What, what else can I do? I, I I know how to do things. I can clean this. I can clean that. What, what can I do? In my case, it was like, I'm just going to focus on residential stuff. I'm going to start advertising. I'm going to hit Facebook. 
spend 20, 50, hundred dollars on a, on an ad. And you know, that's what I'm going to do. That's what, yeah. I mean, you have to, you have to be able to think on your feet quickly. Yeah. Cause if you are abandon all hope, you might as well just, you know, there's around here, this Perry's monument, there's a big battle here on Lake Erie. And uh, one of the, our kind of slogan around here on the lakeshore is don't give up the ship. So that's like the, the mentality that I took. I was like, oh, man, yeah. the ship is going down, but I'm going down with it. You know what I mean? We're, I'm yeah, not going to yeah. give up the ship. And that's the, just to just keep after it, man. You have to keep after it because if yeah. you just, oh God, that's what's going to happen. If, yeah. I mean, if you give up, it's, that's what's going to happen. You have to stay, oh, yeah. try to stay as positive as possible about the situation. And yeah. I'm not a positive person. You know what? I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm usually. I'm the type of person that. Well, I'm not trying to set myself up for the worst. That way, I'm never let down. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in this instance, I was like, you know, my kids are. Everyone's like, oh my god, what's gonna happen? And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta focus here. You know, I gotta yeah. focus and make sure like everything's gonna be fine. I got. It. I got it. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have it, but you know, eventually, it just it all fell into place. Yeah, I, 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 I had a ton of people who would just call and be like, yeah, we're just going to like close in our doors for like six months. We're just going to see kind of where this goes and then open. But and it was like, what, 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 how do you how do you, you don't go from like, oh, yeah, by the way, we've not done anything in six months to starting like you've just given up. Like you said, yeah, you're not- you're sitting on the on the uh, couch and you're you're tweeting about how bad everybody should feel for you and how right. like instead of being like, oh, guess what? I just have to work twice as hard. But. I mean, mm-hmm. the cream rose to the top, and the strong companies yes. stayed strong. The people, you know? the people that have the wherewithal in, in that situation, they were like, instead of you know, I, I know a couple dudes personally that were like in the area. They're like, ah, we're just going to stop for a while, and then they're, they're like, what are you going to do? I was like, I'm going to continue to clean windows until uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that kind of guy. I don't do that. Yeah. But I mean, if they call me, I would. You know, I'm not going to go solicit. Yeah. But if they call me, I'm going to go give them a bid. You know, I'm going yeah, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. But I, I, I just told them, I was like, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing until the cops roll up and say, you ain't allowed to do that no more. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I was just, I'm going to go and clean. I'm just going to do outsides. You know, if that's what I have to do to keep going, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bill them electronically. I'm going to, you know, do the outside onlys, wear a mask when they come to the door, whatever I got to do. To keep the money coming in, that's what I'm going to do. And yeah. I think if I would have been like, well, I'm not going to do nothing until they tell me I'm allowed, I don't know if I'd be in business right now. Yeah. Because I don't know if those cu- I don't know if those customers would have called me back. Yeah. Like, you know, Terry's still out trying to do it. They seen me out still trying to make a living. You know what I mean? So they know, you know, this guy is reliable. I can depend on Terry. You know, I had one customer... <clears throat> It's right in the height of it. Everything's locked down. No restaurants. Just, you know, everything's locked down. And big rainstorm comes, spring rainstorm comes through. His entire basement is starting to flood because Mm -hmm. he's got a gutter clogged and it's rolling over into uh, his basement well. Calls me up. I was like, I'll be right over there. He's like, he didn't think, he's like, I didn't think you. I was like, I am still working. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Good thing. There's the saying kind of goes to is the hustler hustles, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't much matter what they're doing, but a hustler hustles. Like the mm-hmm. people who are like, oh, like, oh man, this is such a bad time. Like I'm just going to go to sleep for a couple days. Like mm-hmm. we all feel that way, but mm-hmm. you push yourself through it. There's always hard times. Yes. You don't know what a good time is unless you mm-hmm. have a hard time, mm-hmm. right? Like if it wasn't cloudy and rainy, you wouldn't really be able to enjoy the sun, right? That's why you go right. to Punta Cana or whatever. You go sit on <laughs> right. the beach. You're like, this is great. The sky's blue. The sun is hot. The ocean, like to enjoy the positives, you have to hit the negatives. Sometimes. Yeah. I did not have a single issue for two years after that. All that happened. I didn't miss a beat. And then this last summer, I actually contracted COVID. And, um, <laughs> it knocked me, um, I could not do anything for two weeks Yeah, and not because I wasn't allowed to, I just physically could not do anything. I was, yeah. it, it wiped me out, you know? So that's really strange how that works. So everything right. opened up. It lets you do fine. it. Yeah. And, and then, then it was like, okay, things are coming down a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Let's yeah. hit you. Well, you know, it's, you know, it's weird how things like that work. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I was really surprised when that test came through. I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" After all of that, you know. (laughs) I've uh, I've had it like three times, and now it's just like, well, I guess uh, my wife is in uh, oncology, so she has to get anytime she like sneezes accidentally has to get tested. It's like one of those things. So right, that's the only reason I find out. But yeah. What can you do, well, man? We keep going with it. We keep going, <laughs> keep going you know, keep kind of doing that's things. The so. main, that's the main thing. If I could say anything to anyone about, about this time right now with the economy being the way that it is and, um, you know, things being slow right now, just continue to hustle. Just hustle. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Make, a, make an appearance every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Make an appearance every day. The best time to get gain a window cleaning customer is in March and April when it's super sunny outside. The windows are super funky. And you go out and you're like, hey, I clean windows. Would you like, you know, a price? Perfect Boom. timing. Perfect yeah. timing. Yeah. Perfect they, timing. They say that like a happy person doesn't mm-hmm. not see the negatives. They just can focus on what's coming or the positives, mm-hmm. right? It's right. the same thing with this is like in business, the best business owners – they don't need to paint a picture that everything is perfect and everything mm. is awesome and every day is sunshine and like it could that's suck. not reality. It's it's not reality. Exactly. You know, it's not. Exactly. You can still see everything while still focusing. That's the the, mm-hmm. the concept of the ha- glass half full thing. It's like it's both things, but what part are you looking at? Are you looking right. at yeah, or like right now is a little bit slower, you know, spring happens to be coming a little bit uh, later for some areas, but man, mm-hmm. this year is going to really pop off. I have a good feeling we're doing this mm-hmm. and this and this, and we're getting ourselves set up and you can focus on the good. Doesn't mean you have to focus on the bad. That's the keeping right. your head up. Right. Definitely. Definitely. You got to keep your head up, man. I, I, uh, I always go into each spring season thinking that, man, this is the, I'm going to make so much money this year. And whether I do or I don't, doesn't matter. Just having that, that I feel like just beaming that out into the, the, into the, the, the nether reaches, the space, you know, you just, if you exude that, if that's, what's going to happen, you know what I mean? Like I'm going to make it, I'm going to make all the money. You're going to make all the money. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's all about your outlook on things. I mean, as cheesy as that sounds, it's definitely, it's, it's about the aura that you put off. You know what I mean? And like you go into situations to bid jobs, you know, if you're super confident about getting the job, you're going to get the job. You know, yeah. if you go in there like, I don't know what I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get this or not. Confidence shows, man. Confidence shows. Definitely. Yep. yep. So if anybody's not seen the Squeezy Life podcast, how can they see it? Where can they find it? Tell us about that. Um, go to uh, youtube.com forward slash squeegee life and we're there live every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're actually doing this month, a whole month of nothing but high rise guys. And the next episode is Mike Arosa. And we've got the, we, we've got a really, really good, and we're going to actually round out March with Steve O, your buddy. Nice. Steve, yeah. Steve, Steve Zero. Steve Zero. Steve yes, Zero. If, if for those that don't know, Steve Zero. He's a pretty nice guy. Zero. Yeah, he's a nice he's, guy. Well, we don't need to talk about him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would no, I would give I would give my my normal statement on Steve on my podcast, but we're not gonna do that here. That's good. That's <laughs> so good. Yeah, know we you uh, know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We always uh mess with Steve. I'm a hashtag yes. one clip guy, he's a hashtag two clip guy. It'll never work, but you know, somehow we uh, I'm a we'll I'm work. a one clip guy myself. You know what I mean? You hear that, Steve Zero? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Steve Zero. We'll show you, dude. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Well, cool, man. I really appreciate you spending some time with me today. I'm glad uh, that we could talk about this too, because again, you know, I like to not try to sugarcoat everything, even though mm-hmm. we can look at positives. And it's really yeah. nice to just see how other people in the industry handle the same crap that everybody goes through. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was a good episode. So I really appreciate that. Anytime. Uh, yeah, if you guys too have a chance, please do watch their podcast. It's amazing. It's two hours. It is nothing like Nation. Uh, that is why they're number one podcast there. There's a whole lot of other uh, 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 guests. You always have like three people or four people on at any mm-hmm. time. Um, it's never just one person looking into a camera. So right. super, super cool. But if you have any uh, orders that you'd like to place, shameless plug number two of the episodes, please call me. I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. It's what I do. It's how I make my cheddar. Just give me a call. Shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. And get yourself a subscription to the America Window Cleaner Magazine, awcmag.com. And today's word, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, 
the word to show me you made it all the way through is going to be squeegee life. Put that in there. People will be totally confused. Um, <laughs> but put it in there and then I'll know you watched it. And TJ will know you watched the yes. whole thing. So there you go. Then you can't cop out and say you watched the whole thing. So, um, But until next week, go out there and uh, keep your head up. But more importantly, be epic.